Hey guys, welcome back to Oxygen Not Including Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire. My name's Twitchy, and we've got to open up the safe file for Twitchy's Tremendous Trojan again because, you know, I was off playing in creative worlds, working on tutorials, things like that. But today, we have a big issue. Our big issue is the fact that we need to sort out the water. Not the recycled water, but the water in the bottom left. But we have an even bigger and more immediate issue. You might notice that a few of our duplicates are running around without atmospheric suits on. I don't know why that's happening. Well, I do know why that's happening. I figure out that one of the uh, one of the airlocks up top is letting people through for some reason without the atmospheric suit because that's not an atmospheric suit airlock. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. The doors appear to be fine. Uh, it just doesn't work. What's going on over here? Of course I have found that we needed to rebalance the pressure levels for our oxygen delivery system, but I also realised that I hadn't actually completely hooked up the hydrogen line here, so I need to go through and set up a small uh, small filtration system and then hook it up to the main hydrogen line. The problem is, of course, that we need to put the filter right next to where the line goes and that means I need to try and bridge over it, but of course we can't take a bridge, out, uh, bridge input from the very output of the filter, so we actually you needed to like bridge the line that was running next to it so the output could go underneath that particular uh, bridge. I think that worked out pretty well. Okay, so here I have uh, located the problem. I have located that for some reason uh, the, the door is giving or not giving access at the wrong times. I, I don't know what's going on there. As I was playing with it, the, the output about whether there was access issues or not was not really matching up with the instructions that I was giving it, which, you know, is a real big shame. I'm not entirely sure what that was about, though I did find out if it, all I did, if you were having this trouble at any point, all I had to do was go around and, like, remind it what its actual job was, just reset it, like, turn the permissions off and then turn them back on, and everything seemed to work out A-OK. -okay. But I still had the problem of the duplicates out in the corridors where they shouldn't be, and it was actually become, starting to become a bit of a problem because for some reason they can't go past the checkpoint despite the fact that the checkpoint is only looking to see if you're wearing an atmospheric suit when you're heading left uh, they couldn't head right we have a bit of a problem here as well despite the fact that the um the germ sensor is trying to pick up zero germs, and in fact it is picking up zero germs. The problem is that there was food poisoning in the tank, and then slime lung is dropping in, and as the interface between the two swept along, there's a there's a bit of, of no germs in the middle, right? And that went over the germ detector and it started pumping out water, but it turns out it was pumping out clean water. So it's no big problem, unlike the duplicates who just refused to come through here. Uh, I, I ended up having to call a red alert to try, to try and get people to deal with it. But it turns out the duplicates now, once they're asleep, they won't un answer the call of red alert, which I find to be a little bit annoying. As a efficient and hygienic overseer, I really don't want my duplicates being left in the corridors overnight. I want people to respond quickly so that we can get people in, so they don't end up like wetting themselves in the corridor and putting all sorts of like food poisoning germs down below. Now, it's not too bad if they all fall down below because of course it is hot down there and the food poisoning will die but we managed to get ruby to come along and open up that airlock properly for us but before we get to lock it of course i can't i didn't see who that was but someone managed to walk through with an atmospheric suit which uh, i knew was going to happen but i really didn't want it to happen uh, but if we just spend a little bit of time going along and telling people to move around uh, it all works out in the end if we just get people to shuffle past the checkpoint and back though for some reason the actual door of the airlock was also having access issues nothing that we couldn't deal with as i say we just needed to uh, reiterate what the permissions were that we wanted to have and it kind of picked it up afterwards okay so we have the actual main event of the episode today we are going to come down here and we are going to put in a pump this water down below i thought it would be enough if we just kept it in a cold biome for it to start dissipating heat but the steam geyser that it came out of has been dormant for a very long time now and in fact i think it's been dormant for more than half of the time that it is likely to be dormant for which means it's going to start kicking back up soon and it's going to to start putting in extra heat. Now that is no good, no bueno at all. So we need to try and figure out a way of cooling this down as quickly as possible. And of course, the first thing we need to do is pick up that water. So I've asked my man Zedtech if he can build my myself a little pump down in the water. But we got a little bit of a notification whilst doing that that the uh, the pump inside the natural gas generator there was having a little bit of an overheat moment. 
not the end of the world. We will deal with that, particularly as that gas uh, geyser is also about to go dormant soon so that we can get in there and replace the items with like uh, gold amalgam based uh, pumps. That would be great. Okay, so the, pump, the pipes here are going to be going all around the base and taking quite a circuitous route to do so. Mainly this is so that we don't have to cross over the other water systems that we have in the area. It was kind of the big worry of mine was how do we get around all the wastewater coming from, say, the gas generators and stuff like that. But it turns out there was a nice side path up the uh, up the edge of it here that we should be able to get everyone to come through. We've laid down the pipe orders and we have laid down the access orders, if you will, putting down uh, the orders for the ladder and for the digging just to make sure everything goes well. We had a few leaks on the way, but duplicates soon came along and filled those back in so that was pretty good losing a lot of our duplicates over to the refiner over here is something that we're going to have to try and um, try and combat at some point uh, i now know why there are so many videos on youtube of uh, how to process petroleum or in fact process oil with the heat that you find down below uh, I've decided that getting everyone to come along and make this out of granite is a bad idea. Let's not make everything out of granite. We're supposed to be making stuff out of local materials. This is a lesson that we learned a couple of episodes ago and it's a lesson that we're still having a little bit of trouble implementing. But you can see that our duplicates, now that we have made it out of local materials, are going around and putting in all of the items, which is a wonderful. We've got a few eggshells and stuff lying around, so I'm going to have to go through and set them to compost. For some reason, when you say, hey, sweep all this stuff up for me, uh, it doesn't think that you actually want the eggshells composted they're like oh you want to put this into a uh, storage bin did you and i was like yeah well i suppose that is technically the exact wording that i gave you but could we not please so on the far left here we've got a small room from a past civilization that we've not gone and explored so i'm going to set up the orders to do that and then suddenly downtime hits us i mean that's no big and uh, no big problem it is exactly how the duplicates like to live but it's a little bit stressful when you're trying to put in quite a big project and they're just like nah nah i need some downtime man i need to like go and dance with my friends and i need to be able to you know eat and stuff and i'm just like oh you guys just want everything don't you uh, i was looking for the uh, the comfy beds and starting to put out a few more bits of furniture around because we have a little bit of a problem and i think i'm about to discover that little bit of a problem most of our duplicates have been picking up a whole bunch of skill points and the problem is every time you assign a new skill point they have a higher morale requirement now morale can be built up in all sorts of different ways but the way that i find most uh, convenient is to have a very high decor around you know having different rooms and letting them have like a nice toilet and a fancy sleeping quarters this is all good but this is like quite short-term stuff maybe not the sleeping quarters they spend quite a lot of their lives asleep uh, but if you have um sort of background passive high decor every time they walk through an area they get a little bit of a boost and maybe if you start like updating the uh, the decor of like your machine rooms and stuff like that maybe maybe it would help out a little bit there because as i say we are losing the duplicates a lot down to the oil refinery so if we can make that place feel a little bit nicer it would be uh, nicer for them so that we get a uh, much higher uh, morale boost so i've noticed we've got a little bit of troubles with the oxygen production of course we've always got a little bit of troubles with the oxygen production just need to uh, fit all those numbers a little bit more uh, turns out they were too high on both sides I, I, I don't quite get how that works but you know that that's where we're at at the moment checking how long until the dormancy kicks in on the gas geyser down below and also trying to make sure all the puffs stay down low so we can put that roof on i've been trying to put that roof on for a little while now uh, to the puff room okay here we go zedtech going along using his mastery of all things building to make sure that all the pipes in this tank get placed in this is one of the reasons that i really like trying to focus on the guys who enjoy the jobs that they're doing because they do it in half the time or i mean like the way i'm thinking about it now is the guys that don't enjoy their jobs take twice as long because i focus so long on making sure it matches up that it ends up like it feels like a um a penalty when i don't do that okay so we have a bit of a problem with this access way here you can see up to the top left we've got a whole bunch of polluted water and we need to deal with that and the most expedious way i can think of doing that i think expedious is a word we'll find out uh maybe expedient is to put down a pump at the bottom Where, wherever i think the water is going to fall to we'll just put down a pump and make sure it's just constantly on we've got a, a um a water a wastewater pipe next to it so it's all good another problem we've got is the fact that this uh, gas generator there can't output its carbon dioxide i really wish we'd hung around that a little bit more but i gave it a whole bunch of orders to just like 
pump outside. If, it's, if it finds carbon dioxide, it puts it back into the waste carbon dioxide area. But if it finds anything else, it vents it into the corridor, as seems to be uh, the way that I deal with my waste gases. But unfortunately, this problem was actually caused by the waste gases being pumped into the corridor. There is too much oxygen there, and it keeps displacing all the, uh, the contents of that room every time the door gets opened. And of course, it's only supposed to be full of carbon dioxide because it's got a carbon dioxide scrubber in there to keep it clean. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's the situation we're at right now. As I say, I've put in all those orders up to the top right there to try and make sure that uh, the room gets cleared out and we can deal with that going through and changing a whole bunch of the priorities here i want the dig out dig errands to be high priority but i don't really want the uh the pipe going in yet the transport tube uh as much as i do want that going through i have a feeling it'll just get in the way when the water starts to fall uh so i have gone through i've already given everyone high priority jobs to make sure the pump gets put into place i was a little bit worried that now that i've told people start building the ladder that the uh the pump's not going to be in place and then like there's going to be all this like water falling down but i look at the errands list here and we find out that shrouticus is the man with the plan we just need to want, wait for him to wander around of course whilst we've got red alert on the go it means that everybody else is actually carrying on with the other jobs and as you can see we are literally one tile short bam of having a flood now this was a little bit sooner than i was expecting because uh you know as people leave water flows out of the door and then we've got a little bit of a, a leak on the floor something to worry about but what i'm most worried about is where that this amount of water is going to completely overrun my system. We were already on quite a, a bit of a knife edge on uh, whether it was actually going to keep up with the amount of wastewater we have, and now we've just introduced literal hundreds of thousands of kilograms. So we'll we'll see about that. Going around, just having a look at how the gases and the waters flow. Everything actually seems to be working out quite well. We do have this little bit of spillage on the floor here, but that seems to be self-equalizing. Uh, what with the door opening and closing, and no more falling out uh looking around making sure that all my access ways are in fact done well and they uh, were missing one small little dig point but it turns out that is all fine now you might be wondering why i'm not putting a bunch of tiles up the side of the natural gas generator over there well that's because as i say it's about to hit its dormancy so what i'm going to do is wait for it to completely uh empty out into a vac to make it vacuum in there and then go in and and deal with it whilst it's nice and clean we're probably gonna actually have a bit of an overhaul over here when this hits its proper dominancy and everything gets processed through i'm not sure if we're gonna move it or or anything like that but uh it, it definitely feels like this is an old system that just just needs to have a look at get a little bit of an update much like putting in that gas uh, gas filter there okay so all the pipes do seem to be coming in quite well uh, i was kind of hoping the ones down in the tank would have been dug a lot quicker but you know there's no no accounting for the delivery system and again this is mostly actually still being told to make granite i did that one bit of pipe uh, in the uh, natural materials but for some reason i was like right i'm done uh, when in fact i really wasn't there was like so much more what have i said is very very important now it turns out that i've decided that something is super important ah i remember so for some reason these next few days i know the, 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 what the reason is i'm starting to feel the pressure of time but for the next few days uh whenever it gets close to sort of like quarter of the day left something like that i start putting in the high pressure scenarios the uh, top priorities because i don't think the duplicates are actually going to get round to finishing them by the end of the day if i don't uh because you know they get distracted i'm fine with that they're, they're able to get distracted i'm a uh, easily distracted person as well so that's that's totally fine and the other problem with that though is of course i do have to wait overnight if the person who's making the delivery as was this case doesn't arrive before everyone else has gone to bed so it, it's a bit of balancing back and forth on whether on how you use the high priority job because you can quite easily be left overnight listening to that siren being like well why aren't the duplicates moving what what's going on there so we have the serious build crew of Shroudkus, uh, Zedtech, Brum, and uh, Captain Subs coming in to make sure this entire area builds as smooth as it possibly can. There are a lot of sounds coming through, and I'm wondering what's going to happen to that Paku once all the water gets emptied out. But I suppose technically that is not our concern. It's going to end up leaving a little bit of meat, and people can like have have some food then. Be meat's back on the menu, right? That's that's how that works. But anyway, I'm wondering why the puffs aren't 
going down and I really want to start moving and putting the extra floor in like I said I was going to. The original plan with this was just to get rid of that little L shape. It kind of offended me. I wanted to have more of a rectangle but the more that I think about it, the more I'm like, hey, those pack, uh, no, sorry, those puffs are overcrowded. Is this overcrowding due to the morbs? Maybe what I actually want to do is separate us out into two separate stables. And here we go with our end of the day red alert once again. It's great. But yeah, do, can we separate them out into two separate stables? Have like a, an airflow tile in between or many airflow tiles in between so all the polluted oxygen uh, displaces up. But yeah, it, it might be something worth bearing in mind. So the liquid vent is in place. That's cool. All we need to do now is keep working on the pipes. Going around and just having a look at the gas uh, geysers to see how long we have until they are, you know, properly uh, dormant across the board. I want to make sure that they're not trying to sink up. That is my big issue. If they suddenly all go down all together, we're going to run out of power again and then I have to wait however many days it is for them to start booting up. That did happen once to us a little further back, but I think now with them all being sort of out of sync in the dormancy wise, they are they should they should just uh, stagger up through. Uh, that that would be great. Uh, so I'm giving this line of pipes inside the water tank the highest possible um, priority. As you can see, they all had the materials in them already. You know, all, all that had to happen was someone needed to come along and, and, and do the little build, and, and they weren't. So I feel justified in my use of super high priority there. Uh, basically, whenever I turn up the priority and it happens on screen, I'm like, yes, that is what I wanted. So that that's why I keep turning priorities up. It does, of course, lead to the um, eternal issue of having to like chase the high priorities until eventually the only way you can get anyone to do anything is red alert. I'm not saying that's where we are right now, but you know, it might might actually do me quite good to go along and turn all the priorities down of everything down to one and see where we go from there. In fact, that would actually be a very smart idea. Maybe we should do that. I don't know about one. One sounds like it's a very low priority, and then anytime I build anything, it's gonna Well, I suppose I want to have the priorities on the build. Let me know, guys. Do you think I should go around and turn all the priorities into one so we can watch people starve and die whilst they are concentrate on the things that I'm digging. Yeah, maybe that, maybe that's not. Maybe I've kind of answered my own question then. But let me know, guys. Let me know. Okay, last few pipes needing to go in down this little bit corridor. And the amount of time it's taking these guys to bring the new materials to me is making me think maybe we need some sort of external storage area on this side of the airlock. Obviously, we have lots of storage areas inside the, uh, inside the actual base. And it'd be nicer if we could move that stuff outside so that the people who are building outside can get regular and quick access to it. Going through and checking the build orders and seeing what things are being made out of, it seems that I am actually a little bit on top of my game right now. But I'm noticing that one of my puffs are producing oxalite instead of producing slime. Now, I'm not overly fussed by that because, you know, oxalite, bit of oxygen, not a problem. But if they carry on doing so, I'm going to end up with an issue because, of course, that farm up there was specifically so we could start collecting slime. Now, I know there's a lot of slime left on the map, but anyway, Way that I can think of to increase our uh, a passive slime, if you will, the slime that's going to make itself even when we have completely emptied this rock of all and any resource. Man, could you imagine the future where we're literally just surviving on the automatic system? I've got a feeling something would break, although I think this is why they introduced the regolith and the space stuff so that anything that you run out of, for instance, sand for filtration medium, uh, you should be able to get from space. From Right? Is that is that not how it works? I don't know because I've not been to space yet myself, so I need to uh, need to go and find this out. So the uh, placing of the pipe is continuing on in a bit, a bit of a piecemeal fashion. For some reason, people are going like, "Yeah, this uh, this disinfectant stuff, we should do that first. I'm like, "Okay, could you not even build the the one tile that's in the farm first, the stables? Like that would that would be great if you did that one." But of course, the granite delivery continues on. I'm not even sure where our major stores of granite are actually coming from now. I've got a feeling the majority of our duplicates are actually going up to the top, you know, where that uh, pass-through corridor is to go and grab the stuff from there. Or maybe they're actually going inside the base and grabbing some stuff from in there. That would be the least favourable option because that means, like, suits are being placed into the system and taken back out and, like, someone could go in and then someone else could pick up their suit and then there's a little 
they, they won't be able to continue the job. I have seen that happen, so uh, it's something that I want to watch out for. Okay, so nighttime happened. Everybody is going to be asleep. Anyone who can actually deal with it is going to be asleep. So I waited for the night to pass fully and then immediately got back on the high level priorities because, you know, I really want them to come and deal with this now. Uh, if we had just left them to their own, um, own devices and didn't say that this was a high priority case. Oh, look, the, um, the gas geyser has gone dormant and we've given it all the all the orders that we said we would insulating it down and uh, i also want to rip out the pump as i said and replace it with a gold amalgam one but zed is going around with the gold and replacing uh, sorry and building all the radiant pipes that is how we are going to be uh, passing the water how to how to get rid of the cold in fact what what we've actually been doing here for guys that haven't been able to uh, place together what what's actually been going on from what we've been all watching is i'm taking the water down from what i consider my cold water tank number two down on the bottom bottom left uh, the output from the steam geyser and pumping it up to this anti-entropy thermal nullifier up here which is you know it's how the uh, the devs have deal dealt with the fact that the uh, the game has no radiation from its surface so just heat builds up so they're like oh here you go here's here's an item to get rid of all that heat uh, and the way that i'm choosing to use it of course is to uh send water through radiant pipes around that item so that it um, radiates its heat and then it gets to like nullify the hydrogen of course we do need to put in some sort of hydrogen generator next to it so that it can uh continue to power itself because for some reason it needs hydrogen to function that's fine i've got no problem with that because we're pumping water around and how do we make hydrogen in this game well of course it's splitting water i'm not sure what i'm going to do with the excess of hydrogen uh not hydrogen sorry oxygen that that is actually a concern of mine um if you've got any ideas on what to do with it i mean obviously the ideal scenario is we freeze it and, and keep it as a frozen lump somewhere that's not ideal but it would be pretty fun uh, and then we just move it down to our hot areas put down blocks of frozen oxygen walk away and as it thaws it will steal all the heat right yeah is that is that a way that it would work I don't know if that's a workable plan. I don't think it is a workable plan. Wouldn't it be great if... So they we've got the ice statue, right? Where your duplicate collects a whole bunch of ice together and makes an ice statue and then it melts and spills water everywhere. What, wouldn't it be great if we could do that with any of the ices? Be like, here's some oxygen ice. Make a, make a statue out of that. Look at it freeze and just provide oxygen for everyone. I, I think that would be a strong play. I don't know if there's a mod out there for that or whatever. I've been looking at the mods on the on the Steam Workshop, actually. Uh, they're looking pretty tasty. There's things like a, a one wide door, a one tall door. And you might be like, why do you want a one tall door? And it's actually to like put on top of ladders and stuff like that. Sometimes I just want a little trap door in the floor to let my guys drop out the bottom of the area or something. Right? Um, that's that's a functionality like that, that area right there that we just watched them go through uh, that's a functionality that isn't actually in the base game you end up having to like bury half your door into a wall uh tommy went and got stuck now what's actually happened here is he's fallen asleep he's fallen asleep in the tube but i didn't i didn't quite understand at the time i've had to go through and rewatch all the all the footage to find out exactly what's going on but yeah tommy got stuck he fell asleep in the tube and he wasn't letting people i think he was letting people pass but it, it just looked wrong so here we go the water doth be pumping the first water of our serious cooling system my major concern here is what temperature to be pumping the water out because obviously every time that we pass it past the uh, hydrogen thermal nullifier machine it's going to lose a certain amount of heat and if the water drops below zero degrees when that happens it's going to freeze in the pipes and break it now that's not what i want obviously that is not what i want so we're going to do our best to make sure that we're pumping in hot enough water that we don't get frozen water out the ideal temperature obviously somewhere between 5 and 15 degrees uh, that gives you time to like warm it up if you will uh, and yeah that everything should work out with that so i'm having a look and the water seems to be coming out at about 24 degrees so we seem to be losing about 10 now i've told the pump to pick up the water if it's hotter than 25 degrees and if we lose about 10 that takes it to 15 so i think Feel relatively comfortable with how that is uh, just making sure that the water gets back as you can see it's uh, going through isolate uh, sorry insulated pumps uh, so that we can make sure that we pump back the water that we chilled we don't want to be as, as much as it would be nice just chilling the base in general or at least the asteroid in general uh, we do want to chill specific places okay here comes one of the first upgrades for this uh, sort of gas generator area over here uh, we're going to be replacing all the mechanical equipment with 
gold amalgam based mechanical equipment so that its overheat temperature is 50 degrees higher so we don't have to worry about that now it still isn't quite as high as it needs to be to deal with the uh, the actual temperature of the gas coming out but if we can keep it pumping fast enough then um, the temperature gets nullified before it actually gets to do any damage this is was going on quite well for us up until the point that the uh the room filled up with too much oxygen and we couldn't process the carbon dioxide anymore and therefore all the heat just kind of built up so i felt a little bad about this paku down here and i was like all right how do we trap him and we built a fish trap and now i'm like okay how do we get him back into there I, I actually don't know. We're going to start by building this little item here. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it will work. But we're just going to have a quick look at the water before we wrap up. It seems to be dropping cold water into the hot, and the hot water is being pulled back out. But I've got to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time, where hopefully we get to enjoy all this beautiful new chilled water. And with that... Hopefully we get to do some science, because this is what it's all about, because the science machine needs the water, and we haven't been able to do any research, any space research, for some time. But I will see you then, when we're gonna do that. Bye!